and okay. uh, we are starting with the first keynote lecture. Uh, it will be presented by Kastotis Lorinskas, and he's going to talk about food significance in tennis, stroke, and serve. And uh, I'm very glad that he agreed to come here. He is one of the physios, which is well known in Lithuania by working with the, with the tennis players, with the top athletes, and I think it will be very interesting for us to see, to, to hear his, his opinion and his knowledge. Uh, hello everyone, dear colleagues, physicians, therapists, uh, athletes, scientists, and just uh, keen to tennis, tennis fans, and active people. I'm very glad to start the second part of the, this Congress. Uh, enjoyed to listen the morning sessions and very informative and very visually uh, presented with the uh, keynote lectures and um, I'm very glad to welcome you all of you at the World Medical Tennis Society Championship in Lithuania. Uh, tennis as a sports, as a recreative sports, uh, I should say just starting small steps in Lithuania and uh, to encourage it and to promote, I think we need more and more some kind of these uh, gatherings. Let's see. And uh, today I will present uh, a topic about the food significance, and it's more about biomechanical approach to the production of the racket movement and force in, in the racket movement. And I'm very glad of this opportunity to pay more attention at the bottom of the body that connect us to the ground. And I will try to say my, my opinion, to say my practical insights into the food significance into tennis movement. And uh, at the introduction, I will start with the objects that defines the good movement, the good tennis movement and capabilities of good tennis mover. Uh, I will try to combine the words and definitions about what is good tennis movement and how looks like good tennis mover and ground reaction forces contacts with the natural sp uh, springs of our own and its legs, and it's called in tennis biomechanics, uh, they call it leg stiffness, the definition of um, combination of the words. And the uh, foot is like indicator of anticipatory movement of a tennis player. It could be a viewpoint looking at the foot as how quality, what is the quality of tennis player looking only at the foot. And I will try to introduce this topic starting with the top tennis player saying about her career, what she felt during her, her career. And it's Maria Kirilenko who said like, no, it's not always the technique that brings good results. It's that feet or foot or legs that moving, moving faster and getting you to the point where you should be sooner that, than your opponent is the main reason for her and for majority of the tennis players what brings the win to the field. And uh, some of the top players make very significant point of the feet and not only the force or the power of the feet, but sensation of the feet, feet and we could say in physical therapist, therapy, probably proprioception and kinesthesis of the feet that make significant movements, improvement into gameplay. And uh, to make this significant, I start from the professional tennis players uh, defining 
as I said, what is good tennis movement characteristics? And uh, how do professional tennis players and their coaches define what is good movement? And in this slide, we could see like the tennis movement is combined of the, like good tennis move is combined of the read the play, efficient move and be fast. And it's the co movement combination, it's uh, intuition of the movement, transition of the movement, arrival at the ball setup phase, contact with the ball and changing the direction. And what is the most important thing for them, what they notice, like, like uh, understanding of the game and uh, reading the cues of the opponent and reading the game is the most significant thing and most important thing in playing tennis. It's not the technique that you have. The best players can read as Roger Federer is known like for his anticipation of the movement, of his anticipation of the ball direction and of his returns. So what he has, he anticipates where the opponent will send the ball, where hit the ball, the direction, and that makes him be uh, more advanced in the movement. He's not fast, but he anticipates. And uh, capabilities of good tennis movers by those who were in this study, they say like a good mover is someone who is able to make decisions early and get out into position wherever that may be in an appropriate time. Not necessarily the quickest time, but in appropriate time to arrive on balance, ready to execute the stroke, whatever they are choosing to execute. And the second sentence is probably about the same idea that probably dif different for a lot of the different individuals, but I suppose the ability to create time on the ball, the ability to maintain some sort of balance, composure and posture on the ball when others would be compromised in it. So in these two th sentences, let's say in physical therapy, what we could see like balance, precise movement and arrival at the exact time when we need that is defines like good performance in tennis movement. And the ability to move quickly, that's a combination of straight line speed, it's combination of multiple directional speed and the ability to change directions. directions. A whole bunch of speed and agility qualities underpin that. The second part is actually the ability to decelerate, to ensure you're arriving with some elements of balance. That's not just a strength, that's coordination, that's dynamic balance and keen aesthetic awareness. There is a whole bunch of things that feed into it in good tennis movers capabilities. And linking the Rogers Federer's quote, like my game is a lot of about footwork. If I move well, I play well, players whom perceive and interpret sequence of events on court such that they move into position with adequate time. They represent the first higher order them as a good tennis movers. The perceptual skills of kinematic cue detection as known as anticipation is the characteristics of good tennis movers and it's the ability to read the game, to read the game before the opponent sends you the ball to the direction. So this topic was interesting for me because I could hypothesize or I could imagine these hypotheses before making the presentation. And could it be like the desired anticipation depends on footwork? function. Could it be that foot function to sense 
perceive the environment is highly important for quality of the play. Could it be that higher cortical function like perception, interpre interpretation, decision making, and initiation of the movement and performance of the movement highly dependent on the foot function, especially in tennis. And it's impossible to confirm or refute these hypotheses, but foot significance in tennis could be drawn as follows. the decision-making and the movement performance, as they show in several studies, depends on Just waves as Wilson want. the fast awareness and fast feet work, fast decision-making. And keep in mind this video and remember that I will try now to show in few, in several studies that could be the reference talking about uh, Rogers Federer's awareness of the movement. And elite players during the baseline rallies have a specific la landing techniques and foot position. This response initiates body rotation in the intended movement di direction and enhance lateral or diagonal movement of the ball. So even before he's, he could see the ball coming, Roger Federer with the it's called movement split step when he bounces from the ground, lands on the ground, and he already observes how the opponent is performing the movements. He already knows which direction he should move. And the landing of the feet, the support feet that is back first, and then already turning the moving foot in the direction, he has more time before even the ball arrives to his side. So it could be not so important when you enjoy the game, but we, when you analyze the game, the every detail is very important, especially when you seek the result, when you are performing in high levels. And uh, anticipation of expert tennis players, relationship between split step timing and leg stiffness in world-class tennis players when turning, returning the fast serves. The serve speed uh, during the tennis play is around 200 kilometers, some a little bit more, some a little bit less, but still you have around half a second to decide in which direction you should put the racket to return the ball. So half a second and it's gone. And uh, it's remarkable that expert players are still able to return the ball in large number of situations. It's around 80% of returning of the 200 kilometers flying ball. So explanation of this is like expert players possess superior reaction time and produce shorter response, like they react very fast and they are capable of doing this and they are training all this. So no study was evidence of this. Uh, mm, they made several studies and the reaction time was the same as novice tennis player. So the reaction time was not the case. And uh, so they tried to focus on the anticipation ability, on knowing which direction the ball will fly. And extensive lit literature review and, uh, and studies showed that uh, anticipation skills are very important in guessing this direction. And expert players, what they have, they have and do better predictions. 
and they do these better predictions not only in knowing the kinematics of the opponent, but also uh, leg stiffness makes them to have some more time to decide which direction they should go. So leg stiffness, what is the definition of this? It's the viscoelasticity in the legs or viscoelastic uh, abilities in the legs that creates the tendons, probably some ligaments could be, but, but passive structures, not the muscle structures. And this viscoelasticity creates some time, some spear time to decide where, which direction the ball will go. So how does that work? So uh, they made the Gilles made the, and all the other researchers made the topics and, and studies uh, showing that split step uh, reaction to the serve speed and reaction to the hitting or returning the ball for the players who are experts and, and play m more time uh, in tennis they even react with the more time. They spend on the ground more time deciding which direction the ball will go, but with the viscoelasticity in their feet and ankle joints, they go faster with this viscoelastic functional uh, abilities to get that ball. So this study, it's saying and showing like the movement initiation with split step, which, which is typically time, coincide closely with opponent ball contact. So when the opponent uh, hits the ball, the returning guy performed the split step. And the mechanical ef efficiency of this bouncing phase can be assessed by measuring leg stiffness, so the leg stiffness definition, and spring mass model, so we are like acting on the springs. And the split step allows the player to behave like linear spring on bouncing stiffly in the direction of the ball. Okay, uh, let's go further. Leg stiffness experiment, uh, this is the group of the experiment, it's uh, 500 and better players in VTA and 100 top players in France, and they performed uh, two experiments with left leg stiffness, and the first experiment was with a split step and reaction time, the second experiment was with a hopping on the spot and uh, squat jump and counter movement jump. And the results showed like the experiment took place on a hard court. The participants had to return a series of 21st serves that speed was in the range of 140 and 170. And female, a little bit even more sometimes. Three variables related to split step was measured and two variables related to the uh, bouncing spring energy were measured, and the results revealed that higher level of expertise tended to initiate movement later, uh, landing with the legs even later uh, than the novice players, and increased leg stiffness that showed the second experiment showed that they had more time to decide which direction they should go. So the leg stiffness yeah, so the split step allows reduced response time and muscular preactivation, both of which are factors that support performance as they facilitate faster movements to intercept the ball. On this basis, one can expect that players who have best neuromuscular capacities can afford to wait longer before initiating their action which in turn enables them to relay on the more reliable information. So in conclusion, the leg stiffness and this 
viscoelasticity in our legs that created by training of the expert tennis players are the mandatory for good tennis play, are the beneficial for anticipation of the opponent's movement. Okay, let's, what's the significance of these few articles? Like ground force is the first contact with the ground and viscoelastic capabilities facilitates these muscle springs. Leg stiffness, resilience in the, in the legs that meets the ground force and initiation of the movement of the interception is the is the advantage in the returning the game or reading the game. And leg stiffness for better tennis movement and anticipation of the game is like more time for making appropriate decision and like getting whole information in which direction you should move. Some practical views on how they work in the warm up. It's probably nothing new what you could, could see, but it's each day movements. It's each day movements on leg stiffness, as they call. The heel is never down. The leg stiffness is very important. And proprioception is the prerequisite for motor planning and anticipation and response planning. Proprioceptors have a role in motor planning, feed forward mechanism for anticipation, and preparation and resp response in planning, as well as rapid wiring into adaptation mechanism to affect the performance and changes during the task executions. So proprioception is an important inner, inner feeling that we all know that without proprioception we have a disturbed interfered movement, but it also in high performance, the proprioception is very important for the not only motor planning, but also for, for anticipation of this movement. And uh, initiation of the good movement, of good quality of the movement is that requisite that good movers in tennis could be defined. Okay. And the afferent system requires, like afferent system, that muscles requires the afferent information for movement performance. And tennis players in balance who are challenged with the movement and results, sensory receptors send into the ground surface, stiffness, stability, muscle activity of posture and joint positioning and all these is defined as the sensory afferent information for a good quality movement. And central nervous system with motor control will initiate afferent potential for the muscle movement the initiation. And what is paramount for this information is a good quality balanced movement. And Good quality balance movement for efficient strike and serve. Strike and serve. Okay. Uh, in the book of tennis biomechanics, advanced tennis biomechanics, we could see that for performance of the good quality tennis serve, the first thing what is more important is the study of electromyography made by the author and in 2003, he already kno knew that grip and foot positioning is the most important thing in the tennis serve. Let's check the forehand. And the forehand features before the back swing, before the preparation to meet the ball, contact the ball, the grip stands and only then trunk movements. And when you impact the ball, the stance is the most important thing. And for the backswing, it's practically the same. It's two-handed backswing, but before the hitting, you should feel the ground under your feet, and you should be stable to initiate the 
powerful movement. Food proprioception and balance. The study that showed like training on static body balance and linkage with the effect uh, of the ankle proprioception. The study aim was to investigate the effect of ankle proprioception training on static body balance. And the university students, with all this information you could find in this presentation later, but we go to the results straight. Outcome measures of this group were similar at the baseline. So balance index scores of the both groups improved at the end of the two weeks. And ankle proprioceptive training had positive effects on static body balance parameters in healthy individuals. And it was to investigate the effects of this type of training in patients with balance disorders. So proprioceptive, proprioceptive uh, information and proprioceptive training has a huge, uh, huge effect on the body position and body balance, uh, not only for the athletes, but for the layman's as well. So the second study showed that influence of sensory motor training modalities on balance, strength, joint function, and plantar foot sensitivity in the recreational athletes with history of ankle sprain, it was a control pilot study. So the purpose of this study was to investigate the potential effects of the sensory motor training using uh, unstable texture surfaces on balance, strength, joint function, and plantar sensitivity. And the results showed after six weeks of intervention of the sensor motor training using unstable smooth and textured surfaces, like no significant difference in balance, strength in aversion and inversion, plantar foot sensi sensitivity and self-reported ankle instability bet between training groups and the control groups the recreational athletes with the history of ankle sprain. But better scores of balance testing seems to correlate with increase in aversion ankle strength and decrease plantar sensitivity. What could this sentence, the last one, could mean? Like activity of the aversion concentrically is synergistically holds the medial, medial longitudinal arch of the foot. So if we think about the aversion as a movement biomechanically, so it helps to hold the plantar arch and the control the foot function, the normal absorption of the ground forces when you contact the ground. So aversion made a significant improvement in the balance. The other thing what they noticed, like Sensi sensitivity of the plantar, uh, the plantar sensitivity also made the significant, uh, si uh, significant improvement. So what means plantar sensitivity, like decrease of normal skin sensitivity could be the problem of less stable structures and probably normalizing the sensitivity of the foot is the one more step training in the for the good athletes or, or similar people. Okay. Foot orthotics and anti ankle instabilities mm, influence to balance. Uh, the purpose of this study was to compare the effect of foot orthotics and rehabilitation exercises by assessing balancing abilities to joint proprioception. This demographic study here, and conclusion is like, this study found that athletes with chronic ankle instability who had foot orthotics applied for four weeks improved their proprioceptive and balancing abilities, but did not show additional treatment effect compared with the rehabilitation exercise treatment. So there were two groups, one with orthotics, the other without orthotics, but still they did the same training sessions, the same proprioceptive sessions. No improvement, no significant uh, 
uh, changes between the groups, but they improved in the proprioceptive and balancing abilities. Okay, and the conclusion of these few articles could be like multiple sensory afferent information, postural proprioceptional, vestibular system, optic input, kinesthesia, recognition of the shape and textures, skin sensation, thermal sensation, nociceptive input. It's all these senses happening at one time in all the body and this information, afferent information, goes to the central nervous system to make good decision for appropriate movement. And influencing this movement control, quality of the movement is a decision-making time that we need during, let's say, the serm that we have half a second. And, of course, functional neurology is not in the scope of this presentation, but during the high-performance tennis player training, I could saw the vestibular ocular training before the match. And I was wondering why they were training vestibular ocular reflex before the going on the court and performing the high performance activities. And few studies could say that it makes more controllable the movement, more controllable, faster anticipation for this movement. And the foot control. Of course, the France is the champions of the football, but it's the tennis players. And they can control the ball with the feet without any doubt, without humbling. Amazing. And practical application to proprioception training. With all these unstable surfaces, they made review and, and practical study that it's here, and they showed that mainly these results tells, tell us like eccentric training is the most effective training for proprioception improvement. As Limona said with the loading during the absorption of the jump, the eccentric muscle mode is very important. It's the same for the tennis. If we could see the same book of biomechanics, in what mode muscles work before the serve, or it's forehand, sorry, it's forehand. So preparation, lower limb loading, eccentric. Also there, there, acceleration, concentric, but bunch of the things are going in eccentric. Same the backhand. So during our training, during our rehabilitation whatsoever, don't forget the eccentric muscle load because it's the mandatory for functional movements. Some awareness movement for the feet going to the hip and trunk for sure. Some notorious fighters training the feet. And some high level tennis player training session.
and take home message leg stiffness and naturally developed springs and legs guarantee success on court movement and anticipation stable bases ankle and feet proprioception is a key feature for efficient movement initi initiating leg force leg drive production of the trunk rotation and to the upper limb sensory afferent stimulus coming from the feet sensing the surface is vital for central nervous function processing the information concerning the environment and planning the movement and making the decisions and I had a chance to meet Roger in Wimbledon a few years ago this time I also had a chance to meet him but no pictures not each year but uh, hopefully as me with him I wish you a very best day today and looking forward for next presenters. Enjoy and have a good, good day. Okay, thank you, Kestodius, for the presentation. And uh, what about the questions from the audience? Okay. If a tennis player had a uh, Achilles tendon rupture, uh, what would you would you recommend him to use uh, orthotics during the game, and how that can impact uh, all kinetic chain or his performance mm -hmm. and ankle health? Thank you for the question. It's a very interesting question and idea, and. As the presenters before said, like knowledge and studies says one thing, but practically we know the other thing. Uh, practically, during the Grand Slam games, each tennis player is taping her feet. No one is without the orthotics. Not at all I know, at least. Uh, every two months or half a year, each of them go to podiatrists that makes the insults. And what you said about the problem of the heel tendon, it's already the change in the system. Of course, it will make changes, but the sports is all about the compensations. It's all about the software, what he has inside him. And you know what is the biggest problem in tennis? Every tennis player will say the same. The head. And I have one more question about a uh, tennis player who undergone a fibula fracture. It was fixated with metal plate. And uh, is there any chance for him to come back to the sport, professional sport, without removing it? Without removing. In my opinion, in my practical opinion, uh, he has all the chances. It depends on the level when he left. If he or she was or were in a high level, he has all the chances to come back. Top level players who are playing in top 10, all of them had some kind of operations. All they play. It depends on the level which they finished before the fracture. So metal plate is not a must to be removed? It depends on the case. It depends on the case, but I think the chances are to play. I think that orthopedic surgeons will agree that uh, the plate should be removed in case if, if uh, it can, has a risk to broke. And if it is irritating the skin or having the contact with the with the with the shoe or something like this, otherwise I think everything is okay if it is not influencing the biomechanics and and movement. Okay, I have the question, Kastutis. Yes. Let, let's go more practical and let's make it clear. You are talking a lot of things from the researchers. Let's give us a secret how to train the viscoelasticity and how to avoid leg stiffness in tennis players. Yeah. 
United States of America found like in Soviet training camps, they were doing something different than training with the machines. So they found out only recently that they were using plyometric training from physician known as Verkoshansky, and it was known probably 1950. So probably plyometric training is most effective training for viscoelasticity. As we know that uh, with the age, the, the elasticity of the tendons is decreasing. So what can we say it to the older tennis player? And maybe this is the reason why we had the term in, 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 uh, in injury uh, like a tennis leg. Yeah. So what do you think maybe it's related with, with lack of elasticity with age? and trying to be as good as in young days? The topic now popular in sports that Tim Gabet presents from Australia is the adaptation of different kind of tissues to the load and the recovery time. Everything is on smart training, not on having very load or you know training without sense and everything like this. So smart training and taking care of the adaptive mechanism is the key probably to this kind of training. I, I don't think that the age matters. I've been working with an athlete who was 44 years. He was a discus thrower. He was participating in Olympic games. I don't think it's uh, the age is the matter of question. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have more questions, Kastutis? Okay, if not, so thanks, Kastutis, for coming. It was really nice to see you and to hear you once again.